Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make deep house like DJ Stu, Aaron Volta, and SAM, or Sam. As usual, you can get the full project file and samples, and MIDI, and presets. All that stuff from this video is available right in the description in my Bandcamp for just $5. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. And yeah, let's get going. So, the first thing that we have here is this first little stab, which sounds like this. So the way that this is made is it's just an E minor chord. You can see we just have E, G, and then B. So root note, minor third, and then fifth. Really simple. And then what's happening is we have the synth patch here. Where you can see it's just two oscillators doing some FM here. Just two sine waves. And you can see I've got the second one octave up and detuned a little bit. And then I have this low pass filter. And then the low pass filter has automation on it to make it go like... So that's how you shape this while like having two different sort of like shapes to the sound as you can hear while still having it be one sound. So yeah, that's the idea there. We just have that whoa and then that boom. And yeah, and then after that we just have a bit of chorus just to kind of spread the sound out a bit. A bit of echo and reverb to give it some space. You can see the echoes on eighth notes, the reverb is super short. Then we just have a bit of saturation and fatten the sound up. This is pretty essential because without this, this sound can get kind of buried. Like if I turn off the saturator, you could hear with the saturator on it was really in there. If I turn it off. You can hear without it, it's a lot more kind of in the background, but we want this right up front. And yeah, and then the last thing we have on here is just a high pass filter, and that is it for the first stab. Next sound we have here is the second stab, which sounds like this. So for the notes on this one, this is playing an E minor 7 chord. So it's the same as the E minor chord that I just showed you, except you add a minor 7th on top, which is always just two notes down, for, or two semitones down from the root note, and then an octave up. So it's just D here, really simple. But then that just gives it a little bit of a different flavor, you know, by kind of playing around with different chord shapes. Like you can see, we've got a ninth on that next chord. We have a regular minor chord on the last one. It just kind of breaks it up and makes each one sound a little bit unique. Well, still technically being the same chord. You know, it gives each one of these an interesting sort of flavor. For the sound with this one, it is two square waves inside of analog. You can see here, got them at the same octave. I got them detuned a little bit. And then we have this bandpass filter. And so... With the bandpass filter, what we've got going on is we have it just kind of set here. You can see we've got the frequency there, resonance up, and then I've got the envelope. And you can hear that's what's giving it that right at the start of the sound. And then on top of that, we also have an LFO just kind of like moving it so it just goes open and closed. Kind of like a wave throughout the track. So this is just like a really subtle sort of background thing, but it really helps to bring the sound to life because every time you hear this, it's slightly different, and it really adds a lot of like a human touch and a realistic feel to this without really having to do too much. All you have to do is just kind of turn up the LFO on the filter, and it sounds like that. So yeah, then we get the amp envelope set like this. Got a bit of vibrato, a bit of unison, and then that's it for inside the synth. After that, we have a bit of chorus, spreading the sound out, making it a bit bigger, and we have some echo. And reverb, you can see the echo is on dotted eighth notes. The reverb's a bit longer than that last stab. This one, you know, it holds out for a bit longer before you hear the next one. So you kind of have a bit more room to do more reverb and delay with this one. Then from there, we have a bit of drum bus, just fattening the sound up. Here's without that. And then with it, you can hear it really makes it full and brings out the juiciness with that bandpass filter. And the final thing on here is just a high pass filter. And that is it for the second stab. After that, we have this first chord thing here, which sounds like this. So this is just a simple sort of like chord that comes in every four bars like this. You can see this is playing an E minor 9 chord. So what the E minor 9 chord is, is we take an E minor... And then we add that 7th, just like we did with the 7th chord, the minor 7th. And then we add a ninth. And the ninth is not as crazy as it sounds. 
It's usually just two notes up from the root, two semitones up from the root, I should say. So you can see in this case, F sharp, it's literally just two semitones up from the root, and then you just put it up an octave. But yeah, it's it's just kind of like another nice chord. It works well at the end of every four bars like this, because you get these kind of like very minor sounding chords, and then we have this one, which adding that ninth makes it very melancholic. And it kind of switches up the vibe there. And yeah, and then for the sound with this one, it's made using analog. You can see this one is a square wave and a saw wave. Got those detuned a little bit. Then they're going into a bandpass filter, and the bandpass with this one, you can see, has an envelope on it. That's what makes it kind of... Like, go into the sound like that. Uh, yeah, and then we have the amp envelope set like this. That is also adding to that. And then the last thing inside the synth here is just a bit of vibrato. After that, we have some chorus, and then we have a bit of echo just doing quarter notes. I didn't want this one to get too washed out. Just a little bit of echo is enough to kind of give it some space. And then we just have a saturator to fatten it up. And that is it for that first chord. And then the last synth that we have down here is the second chord, which sounds like this. So this is the sort of journey chord that just plays in the background. This is very Sam or SAM influenced. Where like typically he'll have these kind of things happen. Like we have over here. But then just having that you can hear there's a little bit of empty space in the background. So then when you add in the sternum chord. It's really chill and kind of in the background, but you can hear what this is adding in terms of like the overall atmosphere and giving it that same kind of dark minor feel like we want. So with this one, yeah, it's just playing an E minor chord, really simple, just root note, minor third, fifth, and then for the sound, this one's made using analog. We just have two saw waves, got them detuned a little bit, going into a low pass, which you can see has no envelope on it. I've got a little bit of an LFO on that one since this one's so long and droning. You know, having that slight bit of movement really helps. Then we just have the amp envelope set like this. The LFO, you can see, is pretty slow. Then we just have a little bit of reverb, a bit of saturation to fatten it up, and then a high-pass filter. And that's pretty much it for this one. Like I said, you know, it's a really simple, just sort of like background. Pad like this. It's not really adding too much. Other than just sort of like, I almost look at this kind of like an element of percussion, you know? Like, it's just sort of that important background stuff that you need to fill the track out. And yeah, after that we have the kick, which sounds like this. So this one's really simple, just like a fat 909 style kick like this. You can see, yeah, we just got this one in here. I don't have any processing on the kick because it's going through a pretty heavy bit of saturation on the low end bus being saturated together with that bass. But yeah, just like a nice fat 909 style kick works really well for the style. For the bass, this is what it sounds like. So we have this pretty simple bass line here in the key of E minor. You can see like it just goes mostly from E up to E an octave up. And there's a few different extra notes in here like we have these B notes. The B is just a fifth of E, makes it pretty simple. This could be major as well. There is really no indication if it's just made, if it's a major or a minor. But it's just kind of, you know, a simple, nice groovy bass like this. Like it's just about finding notes in the key and making something really nice and groovy that has this kind of stop and start where like you get like that, but do do boom, and then it pauses for a second, and then there's more notes that boom 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 boom. And then it pauses for a second. It's like that kind of dynamic. That's what you want with your bass line for the style. For the sound on this one, it's really simple. It's actually just a sine wave. I've got a little tiny bit of FM from the second sine wave here. Not much. Here's without that. And then with it, you can hear it just adds a little bit more fatness to the overall sound. And then that's going into a low pass filter because some of those higher notes, like with the sine wave, can be a little bit too loud if you notice. Notice how the loudest note was that high one. So if you low pass it, there you go, you get rid of that and it just kind of evens out the volume across all registers. 
Then we just have a bit of drum must to fatten this one up and make it as fat as the kick. And then we have an EQ8 cutting at 100 hertz. And yeah, and then that is it for the bass. And then I have the kick and bass in a group together, just a little bit of saturation. So here's without this. And then with it, you can hear we don't really need a whole lot because when you put these two together, you know, the bass is so fat and the kick is so fat that even with just 3 dB of saturation here, like it's enough to really make them punch. And part of it is also mixing. Like if you notice, the kick and bass are the loudest things in this track. Like just looking at the volume levels of everything else, you notice everything is way quieter. So like when you know how to mix it like this, you don't always need so much extra processing to really make your kick and bass super, super fat. And yeah, then after that we have the hi-hats which sound like this. So what we've got here is we have like this main hi-hat, sort of like a 909 style hat. You can see I've taken it in here and then we just shortened it using the amplitude envelope. And we cut out the low end. I got the shaker. Just constantly going like this. This one's pretty simple. You can see there's quite a bit of velocity changes throughout this pattern though. So that's what makes it sound really live and real. Then we have this hi-hat and this one. These are just kind of playing off. Yeah, just adding that sort of like background percussion stuff. And then on the group of hi-hats, we just have a bit of saturation and then a bit of EQ8. Here's without these. And then with them. So you can hear the saturation just takes everything and fattens it up and really makes those hi-hats very full. It really helps to kind of bring them together in terms of volume as well. This is a really good way to sort of even out your volume levels with your hi-hats. And then we also have an EQ8, which is just cutting out the low end and then boosting the highs a little. And this is why we do this in a bus like this is because, like, you know, if you put all the drums in a group, like, say we put the kick and the percussion and the hi-hats in a group, you wouldn't want to do this high-end boost, and you wouldn't want to do this kind of low-end boost. You would only want to do this stuff on the hi-hats, but if you just had everything in that group, you wouldn't be able to do that. So by kind of specializing it, like we have a low-end group, which has the kick, a hi-hat group, which has the hi-hats, and then a percussion group, which has the percussion, we're able to do really specialized stuff like this, and it's going to make the overall track sound a lot better. And yeah, that's it for the hi-hats. And then the last thing we have here is the percussion, which is three layers, and it sounds like this. So you can hear this is pretty groovy. What we have is just the clap, just sort of like a nice punchy main clap like this that hits really hard. And then we have these two snares which play off of each other because we have this one, that one, and then this one. And then, yeah, we just get that. You know, it adds a lot of groove this way. So that's another thing, like when you're making percussion and hi-hats like this, it's not just about making them all kind of like... In there, it's about making them fade off of each other and having them kind of play off of each other like the way these do. And yeah, and then on the group of percussion, we just have a bit of drum bus. Here's without that. And then with it, so you can hear it just really glues these together and makes them hit harder. And again, like, I think if we put this drum bus on the hi-hats, like if we had a group that was the percussion and the hi-hats, it wouldn't work, you know? It would be a lot, it would be way too much saturation for the hi-hats because they're in the high end and it just would be too much. But with the percussion, this is exactly what we want. So by grouping these together separately, you can hear we really get something nice. And yeah, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. This video was heavily requested by you guys, so let me know which video you want to see me make next in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets. All of that stuff from this video is available on my Bandcamp. The link is right at the top of the description. It's just $5, and if you guys want to support me and keep me going so I can make these videos every single day, that's a great way to do it. 
link right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.